Loretto on the stand this morning. Uh, he was testifying about a survey that he had designed of Pennsylvania voters. Uh, and they surveyed over 2,000 voters. Uh, this was a very professionally done survey, um, very high degree of accuracy. And I think there are four significant aspects to Professor Loretto's testimony. The first is looking at the rate of people not having the kind of ID you need to vote. What Professor Barreto found is that it's upwards of a million people in Pennsylvania, eligible voters in Pennsylvania, do not have the type of ID you need to vote. And his assessment looks not just as we have whether you have the ID, it looks at all different forms of ID. And significantly, we've got well over a half a million voters who voted in the 2008 presidential election so in 2012, under this law, those individuals would not be allowed to vote. The second thing that I think is particularly important from Professor Loretto's testimony is that the burden of the photo ID law falls disproportionately on certain demographic groups, notably on people who are poor, on people who are uneducated, on people who are young, and people who are old. Uh, on people who are Latino and on uh, women, because women have, many, many women have issues with name conformity because they may have changed their name due to marriage. And so women actually have a much lower rate of possessing the correct type of ID than do men. Um, the, functioning quickly <laughs> at this point in the day. Um, the, um, yeah, the knowledge is full. Can, can I ask you about the, um, the, uh, the part about the um, ethnic minority groups? Were, were, were the num when I was looking back at my notes, the numbers I found about those were those talking about who was born in Pennsylvania and therefore would be more able to get their birth certificate authenticated. Were, were, was there separate uh, data about there, yeah, there's, those yeah, there's, there's, there's There was sort of a subset. So what the, what the data found that Latinos have a substantially higher rate of not having the ID than any other demographic group. Um, surprising to Professor Beretta was that he found that the rate of African Americans having ID was substantially the same as uh, Caucasians having uh, the ID. There was a, a, a part of his finding where he talked about the effect of Pennsylvania allowing people to not show a birth certificate state. And what he showed is that 80% of white people are born in Pennsylvania, only 66% of African Americans are born in Pennsylvania, only 18% of Latinos are born in Pennsylvania, which means all of those people cannot take advantage of this easier system where you don't have to show a, uh, a birth certificate. So all of those folks not only have to get a birth certificate from another state or from Puerto Rico, um, uh, but they have to get seal persons that they have to go through that whole process of actually getting that ID. So that exception that the Commonwealth has made really has a discriminatory effect primarily on people of color, especially on Latinos. Um, the, um, you just said the third one. Can I ask you about... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> about he, he talked about how he was skeptical that a voter education campaign could do much. Um, right. And the Commonwealth pointed out that doesn't that make a lot of assumptions about what kind of voter, what kind of education campaign we're going to come out with? I mean, how can you assume like what people will and won't pay attention right. to on TV? Right. Um, so I'm going to answer the question I want to answer, and then I'll get to yours. So the third, and, and this is uh, sorry, very, uh, uh, the, the third sort of important finding that Professor Beretta testified about is that about 37 percent of people did not know that. Pennsylvania has this new voter ID requirement. The survey was taken in late June, early July, so this is three months after the law is passed. This is after all the publicity surrounding the passage. This is after the lawsuit has been filed. There's been a lot of publicity, a lot of news about this law, and still 37% of people did not know that Pennsylvania had this photo ID requirement. Even more concerning is the fact that 98% of the people surveyed 
thought that they had an ID that would work. 98% of the people. And what he found was that about 12% of the people were wrong. 12% of the people were mistaken in thinking that they had a valid ID. Now the reason those two findings are so important is that if you don't know there's an ID requirement, even if you have the ID, you might not bring it to the polls. The reason the mistaken ID finding is so important is that if you think you have the right kind of ID, you're not going to be paying attention to somebody telling you you need ID, you need a certain kind of ID. As soon as you hear an ad, oh, we have a voter ID law, I'm going to go get a beer. Right? Because you think you've got the right kind of ID, and you are not going to realize that you don't have the right kind of ID to vote until you show up at the polls on election day. And at that point, you're going to find out, uh-oh, i got to get the right kind of ID. And voting provisionally doesn't mean you get to vote. It doesn't excuse you from the photo ID requirement. You still have to go out and get that photo ID, but you got to do it in six days. And if you don't have it, unless you left it at home, if you have to get it from scratch, you are not going to get it within those six days. So the reason the knowledge information that Professor Beretta testified about, the lack of knowledge about the law, the mistakenness that people have about whether they have the ID is so important is that it's going to make it extremely difficult. And Professor Beretta testified virtually impossible for the Commonwealth to try to educate all of those people. And even if you educate them, those people still have to have the time and the means to get to PennDOT. There's no way you can be sure that every voter who is eligible to vote is going to have ID on election day and is going to be able to vote. Um, I just want to make sure I understand that like 12 or 13 percent like uh, about people who, who think that they're okay right. but actually aren't. Yeah. Um, are those percentages, and let's say it's like 13 percent for one of them, is that saying that 13 percent of um, eligible voters, if that's the category, 13 percent of eligible voters think that they have the correct ID, but in fact do not, or the 13% of those who think that they have the correct ID no, do no, not. It, it is the total, and I, and I can't remember the exact numbers, and, and I think it's about 12% of registered voters, you're talking close to a million mm -hmm. voters who are eligible to vote, or they're registered, they meet all the qualifications, and when you ask them, do you have a photo ID in order to vote, and they say yes. And then after that question is asked, they take the people through to look at exactly what kinds of ID they have. And what they found is that between 12 and 13 percent of those people who said, I do have ID that I can use to vote, it turns out that for one reason or another, that ID was not valid. Either it was expired or it didn't have an expiration date or the names didn't match, which are all reasons under the law for which they wouldn't accept an ID. So, and that's just a, it's a very high rate of people who, who are just mistaken and I mean, they're not going to realize, those are the most at-risk people because they think they're right, they don't think they have a problem and they're not going to find out until election day. Could you sort late. of tie these, the, the state's um, discussion of this, this new ID, they, they mentioned, they acknowledged that there were several categories of 